engineer at DME, Mufi Koya. Esteemed members of the Nigerian Society of Engineers in Kenya branch, members of the fourth branch of the estate, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it's been a great pleasure to welcome us to the opening ceremony of the 2022 Innovation Week. There is no gain saying the fact that innovation is at the heart of every progress. Only this morning I came across an advert from a cable company. And what I put on that advert is quality inspired by innovation. So every organization will only remain competitive so long as they are innovative. And this is the reason why for us in NSC Kenya branch, we continue to put ourselves forward to play very key roles in advancing the cause of engineering innovation. And we will recollect that from last year, we have actually put together two events that we host annually under the theme of innovation. And that is what we have put together to now form the Innovation Week. So it is indeed a week-long event, and we will encourage our members, friends, and guests to make our time to be part of the event all week long. The first of this event is the Idea at Aderami Amosu the Skills Initiative for secondary school students. So this is in its fourth, I mean, it's in the eighth year, really. It started up as Project Skills Competition for Secondary Schools. And from last year, we have been innovative about it to transform it beyond just the competition. So what, what we have under that initiative now is that beyond this week, we will actually have more of a boot camp for these secondary school students. And then we can take them through uh, a number of uh, practical exposure, you know, in different areas of engineering. I want to believe that by the time Mommy Engineer also will speak on this, she will shed uh, more light, you know, on it. So we still expect to have upward of about 15 secondary schools. And what we try to do with it is to engage with public, you know, secondary schools. So we are having, you know, schools, Lagos State Government Schools, and as we have had over the past eight years, uh, we would see that even in secondary school, uh, the teachers have actually been doing well in exposing the children rightly to science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, uh, we call STEM. In addition to this, we have the other program that is now meant for undergraduates and graduate engineers. So just building on the Project Skills Initiative, we use this program to bring in projects of undergraduates and graduate engineers. This was actually inspired by the fact that for all of us going through the university, we find out that at the end of the day, you cannot pass out, you cannot complete your degree program without actually having a project. But we find out that when you go back to our schools now, a good number of those projects are just dumped in the school. So our intention is to actually begin to have a number, is to begin to have a number of those projects, you know, displayed during what we now call innovation and creativity fair. And the intention is to now serve as a, a, a bridge between these innovators and industries that can actually uh, take up those innovations and scale them up. That is the whole idea. And that is why today we have you know, companies like Vitapol and in a host of other organizations you know, working with us now to see that, okay, can we actually have a number of these projects? Earlier in the year, the Innovation and Creativity Fair is actually in its fourth year. And earlier in the year, uh, the branch dipped its feet to honor one of our esteemed elders, the oldest living past chairman of the branch, to honor him by naming this fear after him. So from this year onward, it is now to be known as Francis Okwamana Innovation and Creativity Fair. So between today and tomorrow, our focus will be on the fear, 
and then Thursday, Friday, we will have focus on the Project Skills Initiative, and by Friday we have uh, the closing ceremony. And of course, we will know that it is also competitive in nation. So I'm glad to announce to us that just as we have been doing with the Project Skills Initiative, where we have price tags to the schools that will come first, second, and third, we are also from this year will be having a price tag to the start price of the Inno Creative Fair from this year. So I think, I mean, that's a point to actually give a round of applause uh, to the branch uh, to have a short, uh, And this I must say, though the Inno Creative Fair is in its first year, we've had a bit of a challenge to have its skill. You know, we've been having challenges and we even see that sometimes the entries we have, you know, we have to scrape some of them out. But we have not seen that it is because, again, sometimes when you don't have such price tags, there is no motivation for people to put in for the fear. And that is what we have tried to address uh, this year. And in addition to these two honors for these, our esteemed uh, leaders, it is also important that I point this out that back in 2016, back in 2016, uh, under the chairmanship of our past chairman, who just went on to be with the Lord, late engineer Adolu Felix Omundari, FNSC, uh, the branch also instituted the Kayode Adekoya Scholarship Scheme. And the way it operates is that the Project Skills Initiative flows into it. So it is important for the participants in the Project Skills Initiative to be well aware that they are being monitored. So the person that won the scholarship scheme back in 2016, the idea is that the moment you win that scholarship scheme through the Project Skills Initiative, the branch will sponsor your university education. So the branch actually sponsored the university education uh, for the boy that came tops of the Project Skills Initiative, as it was then known Project Skills Competition in 2016 and he has now graduated from the University of Benin. So that now opens up all this year. Now this is another year to actually uh, pinpoint and you know, select another student. So what we do, like we have said, the Project Skills Initiative is actually for the public secondary schools. So that will tell you that you know, we have some children, pupils that are from humble backgrounds. And that is what part of what we look at. So we don't want a situation whereby very bright students will not be able to pursue their university education. So, I mean, like I said, in the course of this project skills competition, in the course of the innovation week, we will be selecting the student for the next round of the uh, kind of the Adekoya uh, scholarship scheme. And of course, uh, during our engineering week later on in the recording in progress. During the engineering week later on in August of this year is when we will actually be presenting you know, the award, you know, the scholarship scheme to the students, even though it will have been determined from now. And then the student that went through this scheme, you know, the first round of it, will also be available during the dinner and awards night uh, at the engineering week. Uh, prior to now, when we were planning for the innovation week, as we all can see, the edifice, the new edifice outside, that's the uh, Rahul Arabashola Engineering Resource Center. Our intention is a fourth floor building. So the intention is to have the workshop, an engineering workshop on the ground floor. Then on the first floor, we will have what we call the Engineering Innovation Hall. Because we know that for organizations like Vitapol to take up any project and then be able to scale it, it will not have to come in its raw form. So we want to have the Engineering Innovation Hall here is going to be an innovation incubation and product development center. So that is what we will have on the first floor. Then the second floor we host a training center and the last one will be a co-working space. So the intention before was that during the innovation week this year that we will commission the engineering innovation hall. But unfortunately, we have not been able to get to that stage. So we are still at the stage of equipping the place and by the time we come during the closing ceremony, it will be part of all what we will be showing to us, the equipment that we intend to have in there, and we can actually solicit the support 
of our friends of the branch and of course our members to ensure that before the end of this year that all can become functional and the number of the projects, you know, both from the uh, India Academy and Namusu Projects Initiative, Initiative and the Francisco Guamana, you know, Creative Fair can flow into the all. So like I said, it's meant to be an innovation incubation. So we will take the innovators through a number of uh, uh, trainings, through a number of exposures, so we can actually improve upon the projects that they are bringing in the course of the Innovation Week. And that will be open to every project that we have so far received, even in years past. Our goal as an engineering body is to ensure that we can feed into the, you know, the Nigerian uh, uh, industrial sector to start manufacturing technical products in Nigeria. You know, I was telling some people a few days back, one of my sons came at the time, and he was quite, you know, worried. As a very young boy, I think he was just about three, four, then he said, is it that it is only in China that they manufacture things? And I said, no, it is indeed, I mean, things that we manufactured everywhere. And we would see that most of the products are coming from China, they are actually coming from projects of even primary school, secondary school, and even undergraduate uh, students. So it is important that we are also able to turn the corner. And that is what all of this is about. So on this note, on behalf of the executive committee and all esteemed members of the Nigeria Society of Engineers in Kenya branch, I welcome us all to the 2022 Innovation Week. It's my pleasure to declare the Innovation Week open and uh, we can indeed look forward to an exciting week. Any moment from now, we will have the undergraduates. That's why we have set up the workshop floor. Tables have been set up there where they will display the projects. And of course, from Thursday, we will also have the secondary school students. So I really would appreciate that the way we have come from this opening ceremony, that we make out more time in the course of the week to really experience. You need to see, I'm sure maybe in the course of the opening ceremony, we will see pictures of what some of the secondary school students actually put up last year. And it was even from that last year that the team of this year had been inspired. Because a number of them came up with, you know, uh, uh, waste bins that you will not have to touch. So a combination of earth care and, of course, building a smart city of Lagos. And that is why we have actually focused towards a sustainable city. Can we have engineering innovation challenges? And like I said, it is competitive, and we look forward to those that we match first, second, third in both competitions. So I wish us all a very wonderful time today, and of course, through the week. And I cannot, you know, but indeed appreciate our elders who have continued to be there for us to ensure that as the branch, we continue to hoist the flag of engineering excellence. Thank you so very much. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you very much. Uh, just before we proceed to the next agenda, uh, we want us to uh, honor one of ours, the person of uh, engineer Adeolo Dari, one of our past chairman that recently passed on. So uh, we want us to uh, observe a minute silence for him, we can be upstanding, just a minute silence. <laughs> activity that we're actually having today started during the tenure of uh, engineer Adeolu Ogudare and his contribution to the branch is so immense within the branch and outside of the branch really touched life and that's why uh, we are riding on the show on his shoulder even if he's no more within us but uh, we can't uh, but appreciate him for so much pain. So we move on to the next agenda. For those of us that are just coming in, I welcome us uh, in due time, I will give us the appropriate information. I would like to call on our special guest, engineer 
Raymond, just before we proceed, I would like to recognize the daughter of one of our honorary, that's uh, Mrs. Chika Nelson Cole, and our dear friend. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you. So, before I tell us uh, a bit more about uh, what the chairman has said on the two events we are having, so that I don't overflow it. I just want to show us some of the pictures. We already have them in the brochure of our past uh, achievements. And then, uh, uh, just like what you said, before, we normally, the incubators, I mean the inventors, they come with their innovation, they go away with them. But now, we're going to have them housed in the, uh, in the hub and we grow them into something commercially viable. Then we've also tried to uh, tighten our selection criteria because now we're going into serial business and we need to actually ensure that there is sustainability, there is continuity in the innovation. We've had instances of uh, uh, the winner, the winning team, saying that they are not ready to progress with innovation. That means that uh, the focus was more on let's get the prize, and there was no plan for continuity. But now the criteria are more stringent. We want commitment. We want participants to be committed to training. We want them to be committed to the environment. Once you've seen a problem, you've identified it. You've provided a solution, you want continuity, and that's why we up some of those uh, criteria so that when we say we have an innovation hub, we we'll really be saying that what has been produced is truly innovation, innovative, and uh, investors can take them on, industry can take them on, and you know, go into large scale production. So before I get to that, I would like to call on uh, Ms. Olako. To uh, give us the citation of uh, our days, uh, we'll start with the lack of income. Who do you want to start with? Angela Francis, Okuwa, Oku Mana, FMIC. I do apologize for Okay, so let me tell you this, a great story about. He graduated with a honors degree in civil engineering from the University of Lagos in 1976. He was the zonal head of Lagos State Government's New Town Development Authority for design and provision of infrastructure facilities. He worked at Lagos State Ministry of Works. He is a member of the Institution of Civil Engineering UK. He is a member of the UK Institute of Highways and Transportation. He is a fellow of the Nigerian Society of Engineering. He is a member of current Cancer Board in relation of engineering in Nigeria. He is also the quad branch chairman of NSC Kenja from 1999 to 2001. He was the chairman of the organizing committee of the 25th anniversary of the branch. He was a one-time president of Rotary of Kenja South. Please put your hands together for our engineer Francis. <laughs> Chairman of NSC in Kenya branch. Elders uh, are present. Engineer Dikoya, Engineer Primo, Engineer Mrs. Samus, uh, fellow engineers, past chairman here, members of the press, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I will not say, indeed, that this is a surprise to me for being honored by the head branch of the Nigerian Society of Engineers, uh, which I served as chairman, fourth branch chairman, from 1999 to 2001. That's about more than 20 years ago. But then, after my tenure, uh, we built up the Kedja branch, and I didn't feel that that should be the end 
of my activities with the Nigerian Society of Engineers. And so I made sure that all the activities as time permit me, I will always be attending the functions. And so since 2001, when I had left as a branch chairman, up till today, I've been actively involved with the activities of NSC Kega branch. Uh, to, to give us an insight into what I've been able to do for the Kega branch, I'm very passionate about the Kega branch. Uh, this site that we have was allocated by the Lagos State Government through my friends and my efforts and um, the late Chief Aladi, who was the pioneer chairman of Ikeja branch. We got this site for NLC Ikeja. Of course, again, um, the site was like a dumping site then because it was not being used. And quite a lot of refuse was being disposed here. And at the time, when my successors decided that we were going to have uh, a satirat that we call our own before, because before this time, we were using several other places as our branch secretariat. Uh, we started from the Ministry of Environment and then we, through Engineer Makoju, who was the Managing Director of West African Portland Cement, then, now known as Abad, we were using the conference room. And when I was the um, chairman, I was using my office at the Lagos State Secretariat as the uh, Secretariat of NSC. And so there was need for us to have a Secretariat of our own. So what we do, this place was some kept, it was a refuse dump. So all I did was to call my friends and colleagues and classmates who were then at Julius Vega. And Julius Vega mobilized the staff and equipment and for clear five days, they cleared all the refuse on this site. And so, we were able to get a site to start our foundation. And so, we started the foundation, and then, through the efforts of uh, my successors, we started using a canopy in this place, uh, where we have our meetings, because uh, we felt that if we continue using the Lafayette Conference Room will never get here. We'll be so much uh, comfortable there that we'll not think of relocating. And so one of our past chairmen decided, look, we have to move. Since the place has been cleared, let us put canopy. And so um, we put canopy here. We started on a keynote, on a low, um, very low keynote. And then eventually we Cut this building. Another chairman came. He put out the deck. I mean, it was a street type of thing. Every chairman comes. He has a project. The first, the one that laid the foundation, the one that started the block work of this building, the one that did the decking, the one that uh, uh, took it to roofing level. And to the glory of God, we have a secretariat that we call ourselves our own today. Uh, we thank God for that. And aside from that, what I was able to do was that uh, when that innovation center was being conceived, uh, I was supposed to be the chairman, but I felt that at my age, I would be able to do a lot of running around. So I decided to act as project advisor and uh, advising the technical, financial, and whatever until eventually we got somebody who was able to fund the resource center, uh, which 
is going to be used for innovation uh, and creativity uh, platform. And then again, uh, because I was still passionate about Ikeja branch, the whole environment was untidy, and then the chairman, the then chairman approached me and said, look, daddy, we, what can we do about this uh, environment? And then again, just like Oliver Twist, I went back to my friends at Julius Vega, and they came and did the interlocking block for this place at no cost to the Kedja branch of the Nigerian Society of Engineers. And that's why we are uh, able to park our vehicles there. Again, I didn't expect that I was going to be uh, honored for the Innovation and Creativity Fair. But I felt that young engineers should be encouraged. And uh, in 2018, you know, out of uh, commitment or whatever, out of the dream, I donated a trophy for the Innovation and Creativity Fair. And so I'm, I'm not surprised, or would I be surprised, that at the end of the day, because of the efforts, uh, and then my, um, what I did to encourage innovation and creativity fair that this uh, uh, program, annual program with the name after me. Uh, I want to thank the chairman, the current chairman, Engineer Tosi Ogumola, uh, for taking that initiative. And I want to thank members of the Kedja Bride because when the matter came up, it was high on debate. At the end of the day, it was put to vote. And unanimously, the branch agreed and adopted the Innovation and Creativity Fair and agreed that it should be named in my honor. I want to thank everybody, both the elders, the young engineers. So in all of this, what I want to say is that as long as you have the life, as long as your limbs are still on. Um, I tell my friends, um, when we count those who are old members of Ikeja branch, I think Engineer Adekoya and uh, Engineer Adewolu are the oldest members of Ikeja branch. And to the glory of God, I too have crossed the 70 bar, I'll be 74 this year. So we thank God for his mercy. We thank God that in my little way, I have been able to contribute. And as long as there is life in me, I'll continue to do my best for the upliftment of the Kenya branch and to the glory of God and the benefit of humanity. I want to thank all who have been here, especially Engineer Brano, my colleague at the Ministry of Works. Anytime I call him, he's always in attendance. And uh, when he came, Mrs. Amuzu was asking, how did you bring Brian on? But you see, when we were in the Ministry of Work, we had that closeness. We were very close among ourselves. So even when we leave, I mean, when we left the ministry, we were still on. And that is what I want us to revive in a Kenya brand. You know, the spirit of comradeship, the friendship, the love. In, uh, at this stage, we are almost getting it wrong. But thank God. We are back on track. And so we pray that God will help us. I want to thank each and every one of you that have found time to grace this occasion and say may God bless you. Thank you very much. Thank you everybody that is here. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so the next person we're gonna be talking about is
is dedicated its annual competition, Project Skills Competition in our honor. Everything that engineer or woman or woman has said, I have been part of it. And because of that, I call him Baba Plus. So I will not repeat everything that he has said. I have always been somebody who works from the background. But the joy of being part of Ikeja branch is the fellowship that, is, that exists amongst members. In 2000, I felt ill and I felt the hammer of grace from the Kenya branch. I was ill and I was in the UK, between UK and the US. The Kenya branch was monitoring my movement from point to point. What else do you want from a group that you belong to? There's very little that money can do, but there's a lot that good relationship can do. So I have no other business than to be with the Kedja branch. Who recognizes me for who I am, not for what I can give to them, but for who I am and for what I am able to contribute to the branch. That this project skill was named after me. I will not say that it's a surprise because it came from outside. <coughs> I am an active member of the Association of Professional Women Engineers and I care about the education and the upbringing of female gender. And I feel that there's nothing being here. The only thing I can say that I'm here because I am good and I will say it. And it doesn't mean that I'm special to any other person. Every single person has the grace of intelligence. So all I have to do is to ensure that the female gender is propagated and showcased as being intelligent as a man. So, if you look around, you will find that the space of technical world is empty with respect to gender female gender. And as such, being a member of APRA in Women in Engineering, I decided to contribute my own little quota to ensure that at every point in time, I showcase the female engineers or the female gender in the world of technical field. And there, I was not looking to be celebrated, but I was always happy to be there. We started a program that we called Boot Camp, and I was always, I'm not a member of that committee, but I made myself part of that committee by contributing one thing or the other. And they found out that I'm always talking about skills development for the girl child. It is not only by putting them into sewing and weighing baby that we can do. The female is as intelligent as the male. So my own propaganda at that time was that anything that a man can do, a woman can also do. It might not be better, but it can be at, at par. But I know that in the university, all these papas, we girls were beating them and down. I can repeat it anywhere. So when we leave, it doesn't mean that it ends them. And that is my own mission, to let the girl know that once you leave the university, it's the time for you to shine. The university is to show the men that we are equal. Whatever you can do, I can do it and I can excel. But when we go out, that is the time for you to shine. And that has been my mission. And the, the project started in the women, in women engineering sector and it was named Mayen Adetiba Bootcamp. And um, I was happy. Doesn't matter whether I'm the one or any other person. The mission is that the girl child 
must be properly educated to contribute into the technical world and into the economy of the nation. That's my hope. But um, one son, one fine day, I just found out that they said there's a program that is named after me. And the person that started it was the engineer Fumi Akibangbo that initiated and thought it was usually a project skill thing. And they now honored me by making me the honorary of that project. So he came to branch and he did very grateful. And I would say that the honor requested on me is really enormous. And I believe that I will contribute my little quota to it by taking it squarely. The first year it was uh, organized in my honor. I didn't look at it as anything. I just said, well, let me dress and go. I just, and that's what I did. I went to sleep after me, let me go. After all, they have a program. But I, it was there and there I sat down and I started to ask myself, what exactly is expected of this program? And I remember that throughout my tenure in Corinth, the assignment I was given was project skill for national development. And we had interactions with all the industries in Nigeria. And the only thing that they kept on saying is that they cannot employ the Nigerian youth because they are not properly skilled. The, you cannot find in, um, so many of our youth in brickwork, masonry, you can't find them. You can't find a lot of them in the plaster work. You can't find a lot of them in plumbing work. You can't find a lot of them in electrical work. And there is a lot of job there. It, it bothers me when I see that credible engineers have no jobs. But you find house electricians having jobs. You have welders having jobs. You have plumbers all the time having jobs. And these people make a healthy living. And here we are, our young ones, particularly the female, my concern is about the female, are not in that space. What stops us from having a female house wiring technician? What stops us from having a female welder? We have one in Ibadan now. What stops us from having a, a female auto, auto workshop owner? We now have a few now, but the space is still very small, and we need to populate that space. Our intelligence can be put to use, and we can make our life better. Coming here today, I was so saddened. I was watching a program on your view. It's so horrible where a female was being beaten for um, promiscuity. And I looked at it, I felt so saddened that this is an intelligent woman being beaten because she was having another boyfriend. And they are not married. So that is the extent of how females can be debased if they don't have any economic value. And we need to get to that stage where every single person, gender, can have economic value in the society. So this project skill is one area that will give me the opportunity to have this dream of mine fulfilled. Ikeja Branch, thank you for giving me the opportunity and this platform to exhibit my own little contribution into the national development of the country. Thank you so much.
pioneer chairman of the business function. I was also the chairman of the, the finance committee, fundraising committee of the Kenya of 97. Am I right? Thank you. The Kenya 97. We carried on from there. Sometimes I, the duty of my work prevented me from attending every general meeting, but I did try my best to attend until uh, I began to have health challenges, which made it impossible for me to skip some of the meetings. Now, I believe that I'm advanced each, and I would like to give the rest to the upcoming engineers. I always follow the program or follow the activities of the Kenya branch through the platform. And I'm encouraged by what each chairman has been doing. Engineer Okumola has always tried to bring me to these activities. Uh, but I always explain to him, I will attend the ones that are convenient. So, uh, in order not to disappoint him, and because the activities today are named after my friends, Engineer Obama Kamant, Engineer Vidya Tamusu, made up my mind to attend. One remark that I have is that we do not start our programs in time. I got here about 10 minutes after 9, I would say, and I sat in my car until other people started arriving. I want to say that we must try as much as possible to lay a good example about timekeeping. We must always start our program in time. And if we start on time, those who are not here will join us. If they find that we continue to do that, then they will know that the Kedja branch are timekeepers. Thank you very much. I really appreciate what you just said. He was one, he was the first elder that actually arrived, and you know, I was really shy that he got here before the uh, other invitees. So we take on the lesson, irrespective, we should uh, raise the flag of the Kenya branch that if we say nine o'clock, we start by nine and end. So people will know us for that instead of uh, extending the time. So, you continue with the program. We're going to skip uh, the next agenda, which is the onboarding of the um, uh, entries. We'll be taking Engineer Mufukoya's uh, presentation. Let me just seek his permission. Are you ready, sir? Yes, I also need to respect his time as well. So, um, he is ready, we will have him. Engineering Emi Mopikoya. He holds a BH degree in electrical engineering and MSc Control Engineering. He is a Cisco Certified Network Administrator. He has a Certified Automation Engineer and Certificate. He is a postgraduate diploma in Industrial Automation. He is a member of the Nigeria Society of Engineers, a registered engineer of Koran, a fellow of the Institute of Corporate Administrators of Nigeria, and also a fellow of the Institute of Brand Management of Nigeria. He started his career with Lafarge Africa PLC, where he gained wide experience in manufacturing, operation, management, and procurement. He worked at Ewekoro Plant, Shagamo Plant, and head of his Elephant Cement House. He also has built things in the oil and gas industry. 
having worked with Mark Paul Engineering and Technical Services. He also worked with John Man Engineering Limited as a field engineer. He later joined Brighton Home Nigeria PLC in 2010 as a sales engineer, where he was later transferred to Brighton Home Nigeria Limited as one of her pioneer staff. And he also rose to become the head of sales and marketing in 2011. Due to his excellent and outstanding performance, the board of directors appointed him as the general manager of Vital Paul Nigeria Limited in 2016. Vital Paul Nigeria Limited is the subject, subsidiary of Vital Paul Nigeria PLC. They are the foremost manufacturer of rich home products like sandwich and panels, fabricated buildings. He won the prestigious Chairman Merit Award in year 2015 as the best management staff with over 15 years experience cutting across manufacturing, oil and gas, and power generation organizations. And your Murphy career has attended various trainings in sales and marketing strategy, corporate governance, manufacturing and management, engineering, finances, both local and international. He has also won various awards. He's happily married and blessed with two lovely kids. Please kindly welcome engineer Ali Emi Mafikora. M.A. Obutala, FNSC, the Deputy President of the Nigerian Society of Engineers, to give us the, his she's to welcome on board the innovators. Um, you can go out, you can unmute. She's actually joining virtually because she's attending um, another program, another very important program. So, um, welcome on board, man. Thank you very much. Uh, <clears throat> Thank you very much, um, Engineer Mulinimot. Um, good morning, my elders. I can see on the top table, Engineer Idiot Amos Supremacy, Vice President of Apoy. Um, Engineer Francis Nguamana, FNSC. Engineer Kyle Gay and Dekoya, FNSC, um, distinguished elders of the branch. As a member of uh, Lagos uh, State University of Science and Technology Council, I had to be at the appointment promotions and, uh, and promotion committee meeting. And uh, because I haven't been going out, I also didn't want to come, but promotion issues are coming up today. However, um, it is an honor for me to do the list to welcome members uh, on board. And I had to ask her, Benjamin, who is he? What? Because uh, she sent the message to me with one big grandma, and three of one. And I said, ah, This one is big grandma. What exactly am I supposed to do? However, um, it is an honor for me to do the list to welcome members uh, on board. And I had to ask her, Benjamin, who is he? What? Because uh, she sent the message to me with one big grandma and three of one and I said, ah, this one is big grandma, what exactly am I supposed to do? We all know that, that engineering being a very of development um, depends on innovation and invention to, to move development and to, to, to drive development. And uh, what the federal branch is doing and has been doing for years is uh, very commendable. So I congratulate both of you. You have done very, very well to mentor us, to guide us, and, to, and you continue to do so much, you know, in engineering. So it's not uh, the fact that this is named after you is not a coincidence, I'm sure. And engineering guy, we also you also do scholarship for the winners of some of these projects. So it's a lot that you elders in the Kenya branch are doing. And we, those of us who are younger and looking at you, we are, we are watching, as they say, we are watching and we hope to be able to also do your proud as you have continually guided and mentored us. So I once again welcome everybody to the event and I, I urge you to relax and uh, have a good time. Thank you very much. Good morning everybody. Good morning. 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 So because of our time, I'll not go straight into today's presentation, today's lecture. So during the G20 
chairman's address, you know, he said something about innovation. And then also um, said something about solving industry problems. Now I feel that you know, for us in the industry, there's always a disconnect, all right? Especially from the university and also um, from associations um, with the industry. So when you're talking about this innovation, there are challenges, all right? There are challenges that we face in the industry. And if you're going to come up with solutions, all right, there has to be solutions that speak directly to those challenges. If you bring proposals to us, um, you know, a lot of people say that I submitted a proposal to you, I didn't get a response from you. If you bring a proposal to us, if it's not solving anything, if it's not solving anything, then you won't get what you get from us. So that's why there has to be a proper handshake. You know, we say from gown to town, there must be a handshake between associations, between schools and the industry. So now we're talking about innovation, we're talking about product development. Um, the kind of product that we should develop, all right, also has to be product that has needs. Um, there's no point for us to develop a product that nobody will buy. Remember that in the industry, we are in business, we want to make profit, um, and nobody is willing to throw money away. Um, for example, we have challenges. We have challenges. Three years ago, we were buying diesel at 192 naira to a liter. Um, as at yesterday, we were buying diesel at 780 naira to a liter. If you look at that difference in cost, we can pass it on to customers. So if you can come up with a solution that will make us reduce our diesel consumption or the cost or alternative energy, definitely we will discuss with you because we'll make savings. And part of the savings that we have, if we can make savings, then part of that percentage of the savings we're making, we can invest it back so that you can scale up. And that's how it works. If you can give me a solution that will reduce my cost, or if you can give me a solution that will make me sell more, that will reduce, uh, increase my revenue, definitely I will give you audience. I will give you audience. And whatever money that I'm saving, I can return it or I can reinvest back to you so that we can scale up and that's how I get approval from the board. Now in terms of product development, we're talking about you have an idea, alright, that's how it works. You have an idea, um, you take it into you know, you get a team of people, you come up with ideas or you come up with solutions to challenges, alright. From those ideas, you also screen them. You know, you streamline the ideas. You know, at the first stage, you take all sorts of ideas. Then at the point, you now start screening. You look at the ones that are marketable or the ones that people need. Then you also go into concept development. You know, you have an idea, but you also need to now look at how do you convert these ideas into a product or a service? And that's called concept development. From there, you also test. Now, for example, I work with Bright Report. Vitapo is a subsidiary of Vitapo, and what we do basically is polyurethane insulation and also chemical systems. Now, if we're coming up with a solution that has to do with chemicals, you know, we do formulation. We talk about the different chemicals and the percentage of chemicals that you mix together. So you will take it to the lab. We have a R and D team. You know, we're thinking about okay, for example, the mattresses that you sleep on, which is called autopenic. Autopenic is actually a waste product from mattresses. So instead of us spending money to dispose those mattresses, we converted them into another product called autopenic. And that's why you get a mattress, you prom it, then you glue it together. You know, you gum them together. So for you to get the right formulation for the gum to use to glue it together, you must do a lab test. So you must formulate, all right? So, when you're formulating, you're talking about concept development and testing. Some of those raw materials, which one can we get locally so that we don't have to import? Um, which one will react when you pour water on it? You know, those kind of things. Then we now look at the market strategy and business analysis. Like I said earlier, you know, for the industry, it's not an NGO, we're a profit making venture. So, is it that 
your solution is going to help us sell more or it's going to help us reduce our expenses so that we can make more profit. So we look at the market strategy and business analysis. Um, for example, some set of people came to us that there's a chemical that they can get from Jachova. And we said, what is the volume of those chemicals that you can get from Jachova? How many Jachova seeds or Jachova trees do you have in that? They can't give us those value. So by the time we change our chemicals and start using Jachova as a polio, two years down the line, we run out. So are you saying that Vitaphone needs to start planting Jachova? It's another business, you know, we're not into agreement. So we can't do that. So, those are the things that come from that business strategy and analysis. You talk about sustainability. It's not something that you start now that a few years or a few months down the line will be a problem. All right? So that's what you do when you talk about market strategy and business analysis. And you also need to be careful with copy and paste. Um, there might be a solution in China or in India, but it might not be applicable to us in Nigeria. So we must test that product, test that solution in the market to see if it's viable. Then you now scale it up. Once it passes, you scale it up, you do a product development, which some people also call samples. You do samples and you give it to some key people to test so that you can get feedback. So that you can get feedback. Once you get the feedback, then that will now let you know if you need to deploy. And deployment is talking about putting it into the market, then you do market entry and commercialization. Market entry, commercialization, you do marketing, advert to boost those things. Um, there's also a feedback loop. You know, for those stages, if it's not working, then you still not need to take it back and reward. Now, you need, you need to put a team around it. All right? This thing that I'm talking about is not in the office of the group MD or the board of directors. There's a team around some of these things. Uh, you have the R&D department. Uh, you also have the sales and marketing team. Right. The salesman takes that product and that service into the, the market space. The marketing person helps you with adverts. He also helps you with SWOT analysis, helps you with what the market is saying, helps you with what competitors are saying, and also, also helps you to create value. Now, the team comes up with everything that I've spoken about, you know, idea generation, you stream the idea, you test the product, you scale the idea, and the technical team will also let you know the kind of investment that you need to do. Do we need to buy new machines? Can we use our existing machines? Do we need to scale up what we have? So that's basically what the product development team does. Now, we keep saying that for any business that is not innovative, that you don't keep evolving, then you'll be extinct. You'll be extinct. Now, for white form, people know us for mattress and pillows, but we've gone beyond that. And now we make car filters, which is quite a part. Um, we make insulation, preferred buildings, cold rooms. Uh, for every shopping mall that you see in Nigeria, uh, we make insulation for them about 80% of the malls. Um, we also build telecom shelters. We also have a business that we call Vital Bisco. They make stereo big wheels, seats for bikes, seats for tricycles. Um, we also have Vital Green, which is into shoe soles, converting shoe soles. Um, we also have Vital Blue, Dube. Bed sheets, pillows. So we keep evolving because if you go into, uh, if you are staying with just mattresses, then I'm sure that our growth will have been limited as we speak. So some of the examples of product development that we're talking about is at a point we used to use the landline. All right, it wasn't mobile. If businesses have been involved, you know, there was no point for us to, to move into mobile phones. Um, we also talk about your laptop from desktop and the likes. So, there are businesses that you need to pay particular attention to when it comes to R&D. And that's why Matifoam is interested in what the Kenja branch is doing. And because we know that some of the solutions that we want lies within the engineers. And that's why there's a partnership, there's a synergy between Matifoam and NSC Ikeja. Um, also, you know, industry challenges that we're talking about is, I mentioned this one. We also have a challenge with waste, all right? The amount that we spend to dispose industrial waste is huge. If someone can come up with a solution, we can give you the amount that we spend on the monthly basis to dispose of waste. We can give you samples of the waste. If you can help us to see how we can recycle, 
this waste to convert it into a product and we can make a savings. Then we can have an agreement with you that the percentage savings that we're making, we will give it to you. We will give it to you. So instead of us paying long and that huge amount of money, we will definitely give you that percentage so that you can use it to develop and scale up that product. So that's all I have. Thank you for your time. So, for those of us that have actually visited Vitapo, uh, you know, that, uh, I would say that that's just a tip of the iceberg of what Vitapo does and the opportunities that is available for everyone. He has really had like three opportunities now, and he didn't say to he just went to NSC their branch, which is a platform for all of us to actually tap into the opportunity. So I thank you so very much uh, for your continual support and uh, always creating the opportunity for everyone to actually excel. Some of the things you just mentioned, when we went there, one of our members that followed me was asking me a question and I said, come up with a proposal and try to go to write up one and just retreated this right now. Thank you so very much. Uh, before we call on the next speaker, um, Ms. Nisi Mando, she's actually based in Canada. Um, I hope she can hear me. I've seen her online. And uh, please, ma'am, I will call you in about five minutes for you to come on board. So in case we have any questions for Engineer um, Mufikoya, please, I seek our indulgence to take both speakers um, feedback together because actually I also appreciate this is a commitment to just waking up by the time we started and luckily or unfortunately our delay uh, give her a bit of time to actually get out of bed. So um, the last one will take uh, this is a uh, short bow. Let me she is currently the chief operating officer of LMU World. One of its advocates leading ed tech companies focused on designing, learning, games, and simulations that provide more accessible education for curious children across Africa. Prior to this, she was the practice lead education and co creation hub in Africa's largest innovation hub, where she worked with organizations like Meta, Mastercard Foundation, European Commission, among others, to design and deliver various capital programs across Africa. She has also worked as a program coordinator, EB as Lead Africa, where she developed e-learning solutions for the organization's curriculum. Nisi is an alumni of the U.S. Consulate Parity Youth Fellowship Initiative, CYFA, in Nigeria. The CMA Stephen Germany do good education challenge Africa and hold a bachelor's degree in computer science from Bangkok University. Please kindly put your hands together for this thing. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, and that's uh, for the introduction. So um, I've been invited to talk about entrepreneurship and, and, and critical thinking, and I'm just going to share my story this journey just to also encourage as well as provide you know some sort of blueprint or guidance for um, those of us who are coming up here today or who be you know getting inducted as, as trainees. So I'd like to start from um, when I was a lot younger. So I've always been very creative. Um, I'm very curious as a child. I, I think I listen to um, two previous speakers, the women who spoke, and I was really inspired to, you know, to listen to, to them talk about the importance as well of women, you know, being in this field. So I remember as a child, really curious, I wanted to be an engineer, but then it wasn't something that, you know, would I say my father wanted, I'm sure all of us growing up, we always had that point where you know, your parents would say, this is what you're going to be, and my father particularly did not see how his daughter was going to be doing something really termed a man's you know, work. And so eventually, 
you know, I went on to study computer science because I thought that still gave me that ability to create and, you know, and do what it was I wanted to do, solve problems, the ability to leverage technology to solve problems. And on this particular topic of entrepreneurship and critical thinking, I think that statement I made is very key. There's a definition of entrepreneurship that I like, and it talks about the creation and extraction of economic value. Now, if you're going to be able to, one, create, and two, extract value, it means that there's a lot of in-depth work that has to be done. And so the question then is, how do you go about finding out a you know, problem? How do you go about you know, solving this problem? And how do you go about, after you have identified, after you come up with a solution, how do you then communicate this value to those who require it, you know, and then, you know, grow your business, start up your business, and all of that. And so, for the past nine, ten, ten years, um, that's what I've been doing. I've been focused on the education. Now, the theme of you know, this event on youth societies, or media, and the key pillar in that that you cannot miss, and that's people. You know, people make up the cities. People are the ones who live in the cities. And also a critical point that when you you identify a problem or a solution that is a key pillar or key to building a sustainable city, that you then have to think about how you go about solving that. But a lot of time, you know, a lot of people miss identification of the problem. How do you identify the problem? How do you know that this is a problem, right? And I'll be talking about three key things have helped me in my own journey of building solutions, building products, you know, that have helped thousands of, of teachers, of students across Africa. Now, I remember when I started this journey, um, at an event like this, we had someone come and speak to us and he told this story. He talked about a particular community where they didn't have water. And, you know, they were trying to provide such a cool drinking and so they had they had they had different do all sorts of different research and came up with a solution they built the portable water for them so you need to know that you are not just focusing on problems or things that are seemingly the problems at the surface because what will happen is you end up putting in a lot of energy and a lot of time into building something that nobody's going to use. Now, a similar, a similar you know, story as well is um, a particular solution that was built for tuberculosis patients. So um, there was a particular, the Nigerian Institute of Medical Research, right? There was a particular uh, point where they got to and said, you know what? There's a prevalence of multi-drug resistance to tuberculosis, and we wanted to try a different approach to addressing this using something called remote observed therapy. Now, remote observed therapy, the patients don't have to come to the hospital to get the drugs, right? You can administer the drugs to them, and you know you have the caregiver watching them take the drugs when they need to, you know, at particular times. But then they set up, you know, started building a solution to address that. But they forgot a particular thing. When they gave this, you know, in the period, the point where they were testing the solution that had been built, they then provided this patient with, you know, mobile phones that had the app, all of that. But then this patient provided, you know, wrong house addresses, wrong phone numbers, because they were still taking their bio data, you know, down on paper. Somebody had forgotten to dig so deep into the point where you were collecting data, you know, on the technology platform. In that way, you're able to validate it. I'm sure a lot of us have been on platforms where you will put in your email, if you're signing up for a platform, and they'll send you an email and say, confirm your email address. This is because, you know, we found out that people can provide um, wrong email addresses and you don't have access to them. And this was what happened in this case. And so I'm giving these two examples, pointing out the fact that a lot of times, and we see it, I mean, she talked about my time at CC Hall, right? We see so many people right now, the, the new, um, when I say new code, the quote is, 
tech startups, right? A lot of people are coming up with technology-based solutions. And we see a lot of solutions where people just build. They think they know what the problem is, but they haven't taken time out to dig deep enough into that problem. I really, really appreciate this. Um, can we give her another round of applause? So, without going over the game and the thank you so very much for your uh, participation, uh, giving us some uh, really, very thankful. So, we will take feedback if we have any, so that I can allow you to start your day. And then you can follow us to your talk, and we also keep in touch with you. Thank you very much. Any clarification on what has been said, and especially our innovators on the next steps, especially now that we can see, we've taken two of our uh, sessions, and also we can see the opportunities ahead. So, the floor is open. Why we expect your feedback? We'll go to the next uh, agenda. So, um, we have some of our, okay, I think I should start with the guest speaker number one. The award to, let me, uh, let me just allow uh, the chairman to handle that. Uh, once again, a round of applause for Engineer Nimot and the team. Uh, let's, please, let's clap very well. And of course, to our two guest speakers. I've actually had to, you know, take note of some very germane points that have been raised by the speakers and uh, we cannot thank them enough for doing good justice uh, to those uh, topics and the truth of the matter like we have always said is for us to create more of uh, job creators than job seekers from our universities and maybe not just the universities but in other part from all uh, institutions of higher learning so uh, it is, I mean, that is part of what we are trying to create, you know, with programs like this and of course with the partnerships that we are having. So when we turn out, when we turn out more of job creators and less of just job seekers, I think it will have a lot of uh, ripple effects uh, on the uh, economy and of course our society. So while we will be taking the rest of the awards on Friday during the closing ceremony. Uh, we will only be taking two forms of awards today. And uh, the first will be going to the participating schools in the 2021 Idiot Agarian Miyamusu Project Skills Initiative. So we had three schools that came to us, first, second, and third last year. Uh, we have presented the plaque to them. But we have price tags to the uh, to those three positions. So for the first position, we have uh, the sum of a hundred thousand. Then the second position, the sum of seventy-five thousand, and to the third position, the sum of fifty thousand naira. And what we try to do is not to give out those uh, prizes in cash. So we will always, I think, there have been a time that we presented computer systems to the schools. So this time around, we went on to procure STEM kits. That is science, technology, engineering, and mathematics kits that will be produced, uh, handed over to the uh, laboratories of these schools. You know, we really want to encourage them in tech development, and those are the gifts we'll be giving to them. And aside those, we will for now be giving uh, one of the corporate awards because of the fact that we might not be having uh, the representative of Itapo on Friday even as much as we would love to still have them around anyway. So the rest of the awards, even to our guest speakers, I mean to the guest of honor, will be coming up on Friday. Jack on Dead Estate Comprehensive Senior Secondary School. So a round of applause for the students and the teacher. So can I please? Uh, Please, with a round of applause, welcome our leader, engineer Kayode Puraimo, as we give this robot, robot kits and the rest of STEM kits are presented to Jaconde Estate Senior Secondary, Comprehensive Senior Secondary School. So we gave it to the student and she will be supported by a teacher. Of engineers, the Kenya branch. 
we should present you an award for your excellent performance in the competition. I wish you will do better and come to the first class in future. Congratulations. So that's the Jew Secondary School, right? So they have come first now on two occasions, right? Engineer Dimont, they come first on two occasions. So they are the school to beat, just like the branch to beat. So a round of applause for a Jew Senior Secondary School uh, that came to us. I think it will be a convenient point again to sing that song, Stand Up for the Champion. Uh, I think that was how they intimidated the rest of the schools uh, last year. So we we'll have the honor of calling forward to make this presentation to a Jew Senior Secondary School that came first in the 2021 Idiot Amosu Project Skills Initiative. Uh, we have the honor of our leader, Engineer Kayode Adekoya, FNS. Okay, it's all right. I was going to bring out Mommy for the other presentation, but I've been asked that Mommy also should join. <laughs> let Mommy join, and of course, let Daddy also join. Let, let's have the high table to join them in presenting this. So, a round of applause for, our, for the high table as we have Engineer Kyle, the Adekoya FNC, present this to the school. Thank you. Thank you so much. I just want to manifest that I am very proud to be a member of the All these uh, encouraging programs that they have been doing. Um, congratulations. The Jew Senior Grammar School. Congratulations. And I pray that you will continue to excel. We can have the final presentation. Uh, again, I, I took the feedback from our revered elder, uh, Engineer Kayo Adekoya, on our timekeeping with events. And I would like to say this, on Friday, sir, you know, we, we were having a lecture in honor of late engineer Olua Oyipa. And one thing, just like most of you will always do, is that Baba will not come late for an event. So I said, we will be doing great injustice to his memory if we will start a program in his honor late. So on Friday, we actually, in fact, the representative of the president had not come by the time we started. And I was thinking that we will be able to repeat it today. Well, unfortunately, you know, it didn't go through. So we, we have taken that feedback, sir, and we'll continue to work hard at it. So I'd like to please call forward uh, Engineer Mufi Koya. So we have named this award, Making a Difference Award, you know, presented to Vital Paul. You know, being there, they have positioned themselves to say, whatever it is NSA Kaida Brown wants to do around innovation, they are there to give maximum support. As a matter of fact, what we are working at is for them to have a space inside the hall that they will have a portion of the hall that they will fill up. So I would like to call on uh, Engineer Francis Obama and Engineer Idiot Amutu Amusun FNSC, of course, supported by Daddy, Engineer Kari Daddy Koya and Engineer Brian in presenting this uh, to Vital Paul and Trial Limited. Vital Paul is actually a subsidiary of Vital Foam. Nigeria PLC. And of course, we will remember on Friday we had the chairman of Vital Foam PLC as uh, one of the, uh, he was our keynote speaker at the Tatin Olua Oyifa lecture. Uh, thank you very much uh, for that beautiful lecture. Uh, on behalf of uh, the Nigerian Society of uh, Engineers, Ikeja Brand. I hereby present to Vice Paul, Nigeria Limited, this plan and ask that you keep it on. Uh, you have done a good job, research, because I didn't know about Vital Paul. I know about Vital Paul. So it means we are actually developing in this country, and the sky is the limit. Please keep it on. Uh, we, like the chairman said, there is a lot to partner with you with our young uh, entrepreneurs, our young engineers, and then of course, we have a place where you can showcase some of your samples. 
So we thank you very much for coming and we appreciate you. This year is not just the black, we now have a trophy also for the idiot. I don't know, we have a super just skills initiative. So now this is what is up for grabs. And of course, I can tell us authoritatively also that with the support and the encouragement of our honorees, we are actually taking the price tax a bit higher than what you know the I mean it has been. So I encourage all participating schools and of course all participating innovators to really uh, put in their all to ensure uh, we can actually go home with these trophies. So thank you so very much for our time. I believe we'll just be rounding up shortly uh, as we proceed with the rest part, I mean with the remaining part of today's event. And again, just to quickly uh, tell us that we have online with us now our past chairman of the branch, engineer Dr. TM Olatuji FNS. We appreciate you, sir, for joining online. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Okay, so now we're going to focus session. So, can we please have escorts please, at the stage for people? Well, some of us quite did those. We have shortage of uh, some of these craftsmen, the skilled craftsmen, like the plumbers, like the tigers, and the electricians. I don't know what NSC is doing to make sure that we organize something, a workshop, a skill appreciation uh, section of what they can workshop that is standing to we'll see where you can all get. There are so many people, all these boys are not who are all these singers. They can be bring pretty and do something. It was done by Moran during his time, the former governor of Lagos State. And I was the commissioner for uh, women development in Lagos day then uh, ISNS for Ilope I did uh, I for Ilope I did uh, so she had a skill acquisition uh, center I don't know how you can resuscitate because it's very important that all these people we don't have them and the ones we have are not very good so thank you very much Mommy preempted, yes. I was going to call Mommy to give a brief of what. That's why we said this is no longer Pujeski competition. It's not just the competition, but it has grown into an initiative, and there are a number of things we have already planned out. So, Mommy will throw more light on it. Thank you, my chairman. Uh, that question is what was bothering us over time. Can we if you recollect at the last um, um, current assembly, uh, the past president of Nigeria, uh, engineer, no, eh, President Jonathan, mentioned about skills just like you said. And um, Corin is also worried about skills like this. Corin is worried that virtually every skilled person that works for any of the corporate organization has to be, permit my word, imported from foreign countries. Benin is foreign, Togo is foreign, not to even talk about Germany. We were told that almost 75% of the skills men that work with Julius Baca comes from Germany. Well, uh, we need to fill that space. And that is the birth, I think that is the thinking of what brought about Project Skill. This year, we have been talking with so many organizations uh, for support because of a skill cannot be learned in two days. A skill has to go on for maybe two, three months before it becomes an acquired and uh, skill that you can now make money from where you can now fulfill the first four SDG goals. Uh, we are currently in discussion with flower mills we are also in discussion with um, GIC. We are also in discussion with Yaba College of Tech. If you recollect, Flower Mills has a technical school that fits their corporate organization. And we feel that with that kind of thing, we can collaborate with them. We are already in discussion with them. Uh, the GIC is a project that is centered on project development and we are already uh, in discussion with them. Uh, very recently, 
We met with Yaba College, the rector of Yaba College of Technology, who is also an engineer, and we discussed about this skills development. And he said that uh, right now in Yaba Tech, there is what they call a center of excellence for skills development, which has been specifically designed there. They are willing to take our secondary school students for the long vacation as much as possible, so that by the time they finish their vacation, they should be competent enough to be able to earn a living from whatever skill that they have uh, desired to take place. We are thinking in that line, and we believe that we will get there. We want to see our young ones uh, being employed. Uh, today, the country is known as the youthful country. Uh, and then, if you realize that uh, about 65% of the population is made up of uh, young ones between the ages of 15 and 24. Now it's now shifted to 34 by WHO. So you see that our dependency ratio is very high. We need to do something. When we say dependency ratio, the number of people not paying tax is very high than those who are uh, working. So that has to be reduced. And the only way we can do that is to ensure that our young ones are skilled. And the danger of not skilling them today is that they are cheated, they are underemployed, or they are not employed at all. And you know what comes out of that. An idle hand is a workshop for the devil. And we are already aware of the kind of thing that is happening. So thank you very much for bringing that out. We are working on it. Definitely, Ikeja branch is going to lead the way and show the others how to engage this, the youth into having properly and qualified employment after graduating, whether secondary or, or university level. Thank you very much. So we'd like to invite Engineer J.J. Fawara, the Center Manager, Technology Incubation Center, give a response to all that has been said. partners as well. If we talk a bit about their center, so the whole idea of partnering with TIC is to is for sustainability and continuation of whatever it is that we're doing. We might not be able to have all the machines there, but they have uh, a larger center and we'll be able to work hand in hand to ensure that we support all our innovation. So I hand over to Good afternoon. Good afternoon, yes. All protocols will be of NASA. On behalf of National Board of Technology Education Center, I bring you a warm wish for my overseeing activities. I let me firstly let me firstly commend the organizer of this program for putting together this wonderful uh, innovation, 2022 innovation week. My name is Engin Agide Kowe. I'm the Center Manager Technology Innovation again in Lagos State. The incubation program is a dedicated institution mechanism for commercialization of research and development and other innovative efforts. Really, I, they gave me a paper to present, but I, I spoke with the organizer. Maybe I'm going to do that one tomorrow online. But I will just give you a brief about the activities of our center. We will be set up in Agege in 1993, and our core mandate is to commercialize research and development results and other innovative efforts, whether from job engineers and professionals. And we have some facilities that are meant for the entrepreneur, the prospective. We have a free practice space 
this is run to 39 base units. And we do some. Apart from the factory space, we do contract manufacturing for entrepreneur. Either especially non residents, where you want to produce, you have an order and you can reach us in our office. Maybe you want to sort of, uh, produce or uh, you can be some items like so, like you want to fabricate and you want it to be in your own name. You can reach to us, we do contract manufacturing and we assist entrepreneurs that have ideas. Maybe you want to go in registration of your uh, products. You can reach to us. We have share facility for you at a very uh, uh, cheap price because we, we use our share facility to achieve your aim. And we have technical support. Like for example, if you want to do a business with us, you have to obtain a form and when they give you admission, you benefit uh, all this facility and and you will use it for the two, three to five years. And we are we normally do something, we do close monitoring and evaluation of your business and we do it for good three to five years. It depends. And we have staff that will give you support. We have technical department that will serve you if you in production. We have a commercial department. We have an uh, admin department, and all these are meant for our resident uh, entrepreneur. And if then we have some facility package, uh, packaging section. We have workshop, we have uh, quality control lab, and all this is meant for those people that decide with the technology innovation center. I see you have some, but tomorrow I will do my own presentation online. Thank you for listening. I, I want to really appreciate every one of us for our time, dedication, commitment to NSCK, to humanity through NSCK, the branch, because this is a voluntary investment of our resources, of our time to ensure that uh, we make the world a better place for everyone. I mean, I can imagine this is just waking up, coming into Prudential and all of that. And some of us have been here as well. So on behalf of my team, uh, the executive ably led by Engineer Tosi Kukumala, I want to thank you for your leadership. I want to thank uh, the honorees for always giving support. As I talked to 10 years today, the government had called me and I don't know what I want to check on. I say a very big thank you, sir. Mommy will do the same. Daddy Adekoya will do the same. Like, he came today, keep calling me and asking me just to ensure that everything is going on well. And to the ESCO as well, I say a very big thank you to my committee members, both the planning committee as well as the uh, committee that have been running the innovation committee all year. I say a very big thank you. And to Vital Paul, I say thank you so very much. We look forward to continuing the collaboration to really ensure that we have truly sustainable world. That's where my passion lies and you know, uh, my decide to meet to the organization. So I say a very big thank you to our special guest of honor, to our audience online, I say a very big thank you. To our ESCO's past ESCO, past chairman, I say thank you. To our admin support, I thank you. And to our audience online, I can see you, well, I can see one of our elders, Indina Olatuni, I say a very big thank you. And every one of us that have participated, to the deputy president engineer, uh, Emil Mutala, I thank you very much. I can't, the list is so exhausting. I just want to thank you. And I look forward to your continued participation throughout the week. So tomorrow will be another session. And then uh, we will cascade the uh, details of the event accordingly. So I wish us.
All right, so for the, the chairman just reminded me, like what we did in 2020, during the height of the pandemic, we had virtual exhibition. So some of our entries have been received virtually because we have one in Makodi. We also have one from Usuka. They can't be here. We have one that is um, an electric auto, and then we have one that is an incubator. They can't be here physically, depending when we finalize on their innovation that they can be released. Their partners have agreed. So we will continue the conversation with them, but they will be exhibited online tomorrow, from tomorrow, actually. And for those of them that will be physical, the, our exhibition hall is just at the ground floor there. The tables are there, you will see it there, so that the hall is not choked. So that will be all for today. And then I wish you a very safe journey back to our various destinations. And we all get well to drive our cars and get buses. <laughs> all right, thank you very much. And have a good afternoon. So in closing, let us take the second, the national anthem. Oh,